Yeah, I recently had the opportunity to receive one of these Van Poo digital torque wrenches for free in exchange for doing a review for it. So here's that review. And I want to talk about, in general, what makes these digital torque wrenches good and or bad for your use and whether it's a good option. I think the first thing that's unique about this particular torque wrench is this is not a full spectrum torque wrench by any means. To compare it to a comparable 3 8 you could see it's only about two-thirds the size, comparable SATA or Apex design, you know, very similar to the gear wrench. Instead of going up to 100 foot-pounds, this only goes up to around 45. Internally, these use the exact same technology, a Wheatstone bridge, shouldn't have any of those limitations. A trade-off for having a much smaller form factor, but going to something that has only half the range. What I like about this particular unit is there are very few compact digital torque wrenches out there. Most of them are either going to be high-end brands or they're going to be really generic names that you've never heard of. And I think this company has a good chance of grabbing some of the Amazon market as they do have a couple different compact units out there four models in the series so you can get one that is longer and you can get one that is going to have the higher torque rating but frankly this is what i need and i think this is what most people need in a digital torque meter compared to a conventional where you're talking plus or minus 10 percent this is really going to be close to spot on and being digital it self calibrates every time you turn it on the only real concern with these, as far as calibration, would be if you fatigue the metal somehow, or if the batteries drop voltage while it's in the same power state before it's recalibrated. Whereas with some sort of mechanical torque wrench, you're really talking more like plus or minus 10%. Especially in something like this where it's going up to 100 foot-pounds, do you really need the digital for that? I would argue that something more on the precision line is where you really want the digital. Now talking about when does that matter, we're going up to, you know, 30, 40 foot-pounds. Specs are going to be in inch-pounds. Primarily use this for is either going to be small internal sub-assemblies or things like torque specs on wiring. I worked in the petrol industry for quite a while, and it's very common for every electrical fastener to have its own torque spec. And believe it or not, the difference in form factor of this versus this is going to be very significant when you're in a panel. So on the concern of batteries, there are some units out there that are also digital, but they use these little coin cell batteries. And the problem with those is they will drop their voltage very fast once they get to a low voltage state. And if it's still enough to stay powered on, you will have inaccurate readings. This unit uses just standard AAA alkaline batteries. It actually has a battery meter built into it where with any of those coin cell ones you're really kind of risking it if you don't reset the thing every 20 30 minutes so turning it on you just hold down the c button a little confusing how you would turn that on but it'll come up right away and right there you can see that it actually has four state battery meter anytime it gets down to the 50 percent or showing one dot left on the indicator i would change the batteries out at that point Particularly if this is going to be stored in cold climates where the voltage tends to drop in alkaline batteries. It's much easier to have spare triple or double A's lying around than something like coin cell batteries. Now there's one feature unique to this torque wrench is that I don't see in much of the competition. And that's that this has a backlight. It's extremely bright and it doesn't turn off on its own. That does mean you'll run through the batteries a little bit faster. But you know what? The gear wrench slash Apex made ones, they don't have that nor does the Quinn, nor does the AC Delco, and I think those are the primary competitors to this. The one feature that this is lacking that others in that category would have is some such as Apex made ones have a vibration that will tell you when you've hit your limit, or this does not have the vibrator in it. Frankly, I think that's not necessarily a bad thing, and if I did have the vibration, I would want a way to turn it off, because sometimes you're trying to get to a precise amount. Again, this is for really inch-pound settings. I don't know how much that vibration is really applicable here. If anything, you might be getting lower level precision if it's going to vibrate on you as you're trying to set it. So as with most units, there is a way to set it to a particular value, and then have it beep when it gets close and exceeds it, or you can switch to a mode where it'll essentially just show you the peak values. One thing I would like to see more in these torque wrenches is when you are in the 
setting where you have it stored, if you exceed it, I would like to see where that exceeded value is at, despite having something stored there. Another thing I like about this unit is the user interface and the menus are very well thought out. There is no way to get into some sort of a stuck mode, and there's no way to change this to one of those other model wrenches, which would in fact be giving it invalid readings, which I have seen in some of the other cheap models. As you've heard, it does have a good beeper on it that is relatively loud, and you can see that it also has this multi-LED status. One thing that's interesting is the product manual indicates that three of these LEDs are green and the fourth is red, but similar to what the website shows, it's actually two and two. I believe that's just a revision change that's happened over time. If you want to switch modes, you can do it through this unit button just by holding it in. And you can see that that 60 is representing that this is that 60 Newton meter model. And there is no way to change that. Again, a very nice feature to see that a lot of these, let's call them import gray market tools, don't necessarily have locked down. And there is the potential you could brick a unit if that safeguard wasn't there. This uses a more traditional, what I would call the heart spring ratchet mechanism, meaning that's just going to be a little bit more compact. One thing that I would always look for in a torque wrench is that it is serviceable. However, it's usually a good idea not to service them until they need it. Something digital like these, I really don't think you're going to have much issues with calibration just by opening up the head. There is no Intertech or UL rating on this, and that is a little bit concerning to me. I would not want to use this in a setting that has any sort of regulation or traceability behind it. Even in a mechanics setting, I would be very leery of using this if you do have people going around wanting to check calibration. They would probably consider this not a professional tool for that reason alone. That being said, it does meet the standard ISO certifications for that. It hasn't been verified by a third party. One thing that I always look for on these more gray market tools is how many people are actually producing these. To the best of my ability, I've looked on the different import manufacturer sites, Amazon and eBay, and I've only come up with one other revision of this. It appears to not necessarily be significantly cheaper. While the only branding on this is printed on, I would not be surprised if this brand is actually very close to the people manufacturing it. It is a little confusing because it says node instead of mode. That is just how it is, and you can see that switching in between those, you can go from peak measurement, or as previously demonstrated, where it will go up to a preset setting. So in peak, you can see that it will retain that momentarily. However, it will not necessarily refresh with the new one until it is cleared, which may be concerning if you're trying to quickly torque down a bunch of fasteners, there is the chance that you would have retained the previous fastener. You can see that for the units you have foot-pounds, kgcm, 